So I was performing in a variety show. Lots of strange, dysfunctional and glamorous people. But of course, I get chatting to the very beautiful aerialist. Now it turns out they had been all over the world with their skills. They'd seen amazing things. They trained every day and they really, really knew how to enjoy the pain of conditioning which is essentially beating up your body so that you're ready to perform. <laughs> it's a very handy skill if you want, well, if you want to get anywhere, really. That kind of ability to push through and to practice and to preempt takes a lot of discipline. Our talk very swiftly turned to death, of all things. And all of the things that we had to do before we die they had such an obsession with mortality. I didn't mind though. I love those conversations. Now I didn't know at the time, but they had some kind of medical condition. They didn't mention it much, but the doctor once told them to stop dancing, to stop training physically. That the demands of Ariel were too overwhelming and that it was gonna shorten their life. I asked how much, and they told me between about 20 and 30 years. That's crazy, right? Like, what do you do? Do you, do you find something else? Do you just stop what you love and learn to love something else? Like, when I got injured, I fell in love with music. It took a while, but I did. Now, the aerialist, well, by the time I'd got talking to them, at least that night, it had been 10 years since the diagnosis. That's 10 years of defiance. Like they refused the doctor's advice and refused to let their condition define them. They weren't the condition. It's just something they lived with. And like, they're not stupid. They know full well that the aerial is killing them, but without it, at least in their opinion, by their standards, Without it, they couldn't live. After this conversation, I actually told them the story of Deirdre and Nisha. There was something in their defiance that reminded me of Deirdre, this kind of, in the face of everything, in the face of helplessness, you still decide to do what you want to do. You still maintain your freedom. You still forge your own path. The story made them cry, but... They thanked me after it. So I guess it helped. Maybe they needed to get something off their chest. Or they needed to hear about another person who was as defiant as them. And they just felt that little bit less alone. I'm not really sure what it did for them. I never got to speak to them again. But I wonder what they're up to now.